Hello everyone and thanks for dropping in. What I have on the bench today is the famous Atari XC12 cassette player and recorder from 1986. And apparently this guy looks like it's dead. I have uh, typed a command like load something on my Atari XL uh, but nothing seems to be moving in here. I'm trying to check if uh, the motor is spinning at all but it doesn't, no, nor the pinch roller or anything. So it should be a matter of some uh, belt replacement needed or something different we should investigate. But like I said, nothing is moving. And it looks like the first uh, suspect in cases like this is the belt that needs to be replaced. Mechanically speaking, uh, all keys are working, pause, eject, play and everything. So let's uh, dig deeper and check what we can do. And uh, here are some of the commands I have tried uh, in order to supposedly load something and uh, start uh, the cassette player. But all give me this error 138. So let's jump to the error code uh, documentation for the 8-bit uh, Ataris and go to 138 code device timeout. Device did not respond to input output commands. So that's interesting. So uh, the cassette player is indeed uh, dead. And I mean completely dead. It cannot respond or understand any I.O. command. And I think this document is pretty interesting and useful, so I'm going to put the link uh, here below in the description after I'm done with this uh, repair. Hopefully by the end of the day this will be fixed. And I guess we need to work on eliminating the factors that uh, might be the reason why is this failing. Uh, generally speaking, this has been a um, re pretty reliable piece of hardware back in 86. Four screws to go. I'm going to open it and check inside the circuitry. A uh, number of reasons. Uh, could be some electrolytic capacitor that fails. Could be a damaged cable, probably the I.O. cable coming from the computer in into this um, cassette player. Could it be this connector also, the Atari style, which I think it was used also for X, XL but also XE series of 8-bit computers. So it could be a number of uh, things that we should investigate but just trying to be positive here and um, we can start with um, the statistically speaking uh, most um, uh, often needed is what we need, a new belt. So let's start by replacing the belts inside. Well, at the same time I'm going to be checking around the rest of the circuit uh, for any damaged components, fried components, uh, whatever, cable scot or whatever. So the upper part of the plastic case along with the bottom part of the case will be uh, washed in a while, so I have to remove the whole mechanism and leave it on the desk. Um, I can see the cable looks okay, just misplaced somehow. It was just misplaced. I don't believe it's damaged, but I have to check thoroughly. Uh, I can tell the belt that is connected to the counter, tape counter, is old and uh, loose, but it works. Looks like it's working. Um, I bet you the other belt um, of the mechanism will be even worse. Uh, rollers are fine. The PCB upper side here and the uh, connections to the heads are looking fine. The mechanism looks okay. So we can lift the whole mechanism like it should be by pressing play to bring it in position. Um, overall it looks okay. I need to put some uh, lubrication, some WD-40, uh, um, around the moving parts later. Uh, now flipping 
this over we can see the bottom side of the PCB again looks clean and neat no signs of rust or anything um, uh, yeah I can see that the big the main belt is so terribly loose and old it cannot transfer the uh, movement from the motor to the rest of the mechanism not uh, yeah it's very loose and uh, worn after all these years which is mm, natural thing uh, so mm, it it can be uh, so simple and easy just replacing the main belt mm, I wish uh, I, this is what I'm going to do and I wish this is all I need to do um, but I have to check like I said the whole thing the whole mechanism the chassis and the PCB and the components one by one closely um, but f uh, of course if the belt is the case then will be done in no time and I'll be more than glad if I manage to fix this uh, today so we have a new belt installed the main belt on the back side tight and brand new I also found uh, the little one uh, uh, right here for the counter so both belts have been replaced and works just fine and um, uh, it's pretty straightforward the only thing is you have to remove the whole thing the counter part like the whole part uh, before you can install the main uh, big uh, belt on the back now I have to um, uh, apply some WD-40 around the mechanical parts of the, the parts that are moving all the time um, and uh, I think uh, we should uh, then start uh, testing the the device and if uh, it works it works and I'll be more happy and if it doesn't then I should look at the cables and other uh, parts of it but um, like I said mechanically looks okay now we have the new belt installed I should apply some uh, alcohol to clean the heads um, and then it should be fine um, let's hope that the cable is in good condition uh, I'm going to apply some now WD-40 uh, just uh, around the, the, the rollers and the whatever it's moving and it was the way it was shipped uh, from the factory back in the day um, if you have seen um, a tape recorder cassette player from that era and it was like brand new or uh, almost uh, you could see there was grease around the gears and around the the metallic part that uh, uh, keep moving so it, it was like this but it was 40 years ago so we have to apply some uh, lubrication around the areas and then the pinch roller right here and the hitch uh, should be cleaned uh, thoroughly with alcohol, uh, isopropyl alcohol. We don't need uh, WD-40 or, or grease or any other kind of liquid or uh, oil to be um, around or on the heads or the pinch roller or the, um, this area that the tape is running through because it will damage our tapes. So uh, after I'm done with this uh, lubrication procedure I'm going to uh, apply isopropyl alcohol on both heads as it is essential to keep them clean because the heads are erasing uh, data onto tape or uh, reading of course and writing uh, data on the tape and then we can start with the, our tests and I'm going to test it uh, without putting everything back together because we still don't know if it works or not for this uh, second part of the video I'm using my XL600 because I wanted to make sure that there is nothing wrong with the connection on the 800 uh, XL so I tried both machines to make sure that the connector and the cable is working fine so what I'm going to do now is to type uh, some classic um, uh, loading or saving commands like for example C save C load or whatever 
uh, just to give the instruction to the cassette player in order for, uh, for the motor to start like supposedly there was a tape uh, to be used and so I hope it, it will start spinning we need to hit return uh, enter twice C save and return and once again return and I can see some movement so I pressed the um, record and play together so supposedly now we are saving something and it works it works just fine pin controller is uh, rolling uh, the reels are rotating now it stopped after a while I have to do it again see load this time doesn't matter which command return twice and now it's doing like a um, hypothetical save uh, of, uh, of a program that's why the lead is on now I'm tr I will try just with a play and um, instruction is still valid so it's supposedly now it is loading something and it looks like it's working fine but uh, we can only tell after a couple of more tests so the next one is with a tape this time because it's something heavier that should be dragged and uh, work through the pinch roller and everything the whole mechanism will do just that hopefully so I'm pressing play making this ready I have to be fast uh, so I can avoid possible chewing of the tape if something goes wrong so I have to keep an eye on the tape to remove it fast if uh, it starts uh, chewing the tape run C is the equivalent to load and run um, after loading the program and um, hit return twice and let's see what we really want to check at this point is there is no tape drawn by the pinch roller um, and so we have this chewing eating the tape effect and it looks like uh, it's going well the counter is counting <laughs> the way it should be um, so let let it roll let it roll for a while stop now and fast forward rewind well apparently it looks good to me and so I guess we have to move to the actual third uh, test now actual data test which is number three saving and loading a silly program just two lines of basic here to see that we are capable of storing our uh, programs and then loading them back so I guess we know the drill like we did <laughs> back in the days when we were kids uh, record and play buttons together pressed uh, C save ready to go uh, of course uh, the time that we need to load this back we're going to be using C load instead and uh, let's see how this goes return twice and let it roll let it spin yeah the lead came up and supposedly at this point this thing is writing my little program onto the tape it's going to take a while loading and uh, saving onto the Atari's and the 8-bit machines using you know, these kind of equipment was a pretty slow process so let's wait a few seconds and yeah we can see the ready prompt which means that hopefully everything was written on the tape uh, the way it should and uh, we will find out soon uh, I'm trying to see load the same program and it was a success it was loaded and uh, I can see the listing this <laughs> glorious <laughs> silly uh, listing of mine uh, so now time for the plastics I haven't and I usually do not uh, if you ask me want to retrobrite uh, stuff like that I want it to be as original as it gets over time which um, is not that beautiful but it's naturally aged 
let's let me call it this way so I have to put everything back together it is one of these moments that I wish I had a tape a game tape to load and have fun with it but I don't have any tapes for the XL anyways maybe some other time I can find some games um, thank you for watching uh, I can call it a wrap I guess now I put I swapped uh, uh, the 600 with the 800 again and so I did the same uh, trick I tried to load and uh, save on both computers and it works just fine so I'm really happy we saved this device uh, this retro device again today thank you very much for watching consider subscribing if you like the retro stuff and I'm pretty sure I'll catch you soon with another video so uh, thanks again uh, bye for now